Howdy folks, how's it diddling? Today we're on an adventure. So at the moment we're at Strengthen Services, just getting the old fuel up with a bit of coffee. But we're taking the Peugeot and we're going down to Yeovil of all places. Why are we going to Yeovil? Well, tomorrow is Drive Tribe's first gathering at the Haynes Motor Museum. So come and join us for a great day out. How much rust? All of it. Right, bit of drama. Literally two minutes, maybe five minutes after doing that clip and uh, leaving the uh, services, suddenly um, it decided to do its best impression of the Red Arrows and just bomb smoke from underneath the bonnet uh, and uh, out the back, kind of, yeah, James Bond style So if you come round here, we did pull over, but luckily there was a service that's not too far. And there is oil everywhere. So what I'm going to do is just quickly take off this air box with me handy dandy screwdrivers and just see whether it could possibly be the rocker cover gaskets given out or uh, something else. So join me in a minute as, uh, as I take this apart. Uh oh, great. Oil everywhere. Oh, looks like the fucking Exxon Valdez has happened at the back of the engine here. <clears throat> so, where have you popped? That's the water. The wires look alright. <clears> hmm. <throat> oh, no, it's a ten. Any classic car owner will tell you it's always handy taking some uh, some uh, tools with you. Uh, oh, your mama! Yeah, she's uh, she spaffed out quite a lot of oil. Right, let's see where the bitch has gone. Ah, right, okay. That might have something to do with it. So that's the bolt for the rocker cover. And it's not meant to be finger, finger tight. I think that's uh, rattled itself loose by the look of it. And uh, it's just decided to uh, go, you know what? I don't want to be part of this anymore. See, that one's tight. That's when you saw some smoke. <laughs> See if we can tighten this up without fucking snapping it. That one tight yeah that one tight yeah well, that's not going to go any tighter <clears throat> yeah i suspect that was the issue that the rocker cover bolt just decided uh, it didn't want to play no more and it wanted to be free yeah because there's oil all down here <sighs> Double check all, triple check all, make sure. Yeah, that would make sense. So at the back of the engine, you've got the oil dripping comes from about there to about there. So, hopefully, oh, she has leaked a bit. But the, on the plus side, folks, this does help with rust prevention. French uh, must have designed this to rattle loose so that when it did go <clears throat> and piss itself, they'll be like, ah, oh, it, uh, it's self-rust uh, prevention. Right. 
going to start her up. Yeah, it'll be all right because uh, I've got that. So start her up and see if she leaks. Hopefully not. Right, so luckily, I think it was just that bolt had gone, worked its way loose. And now I have been meaning to change the rocker cover gasket on this car, so much so that I've actually got it in the back seat. But I can't be fucked to change it right now because it's just a loose bolt. But we'll see how it goes. We'll keep pootling along. I've cleaned as much oil off as I can. So hopefully it won't smoke like the red arrows as we're going down the road. It shouldn't do now, but I'll let it cool down. We'll uh, check the oil on it, make sure it hasn't lost too much because last thing we want to do is drop all, lose all the oil and then suddenly the engine sees up solid because that's just going to really fuck my day up. But uh, yeah, I'll uh, chuck everything back together and hopefully we can get going again. So only a slight inconvenience to how we're going. Oh, get in there, you slag. Yeah, that's meant to be over there, but the bolt's decided to yeet itself out of there. Oh, the fun. See, the thing is, folks, if this was a brand new car, then you wouldn't have this excitement. Now, I'm not entirely sure what services we're at. I think we're at Gloucester. No, is it Gloucester services? I think all I know is, folks, is that this is one of the nicest car parks I've ever had the pleasure to break down in. It is, uh, it is rather nice out here. Right, at some point I'll probably have to get some cable ties and try and cable tie that over there, but... Right, let's check how much oil did we lose. Lucky I've brought some with me. Oh, hardly lost any. Literally, probably half a mil, if that. And the fact that it's still warm, so... Uh, it's just getting rid of excess oil that it don't need. Right. Chuck the tools away. Start her up and uh, see what happens. Give her a final one to check over just to make sure. And then we'll hopefully carry on a bit further. Right, doesn't seem to be leaking anymore, so um, let's try going a bit further, shall we? Oh dear. Oh, can't find it, grind it. Let's see the oil slick. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, sorry, services for that. I didn't mean to. Um... She's sweating power. Oh, their fancy petrol station. Look at that. It's like something Planet Bloody word. <laughs> Probably has. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Westmoreland, Gloucester services. Gloucester services. Right. Let's Onwards. Onwards. See if we can go a bit further. 
Now, not to worry about the smoke, folks, because it will burn off. Right folks, we're here, we're at the Haynes Motor Museum. Uh, we had a lovely sleep in a premier, not premier, in Travel Lodge, um, about five miles away. Uh, met a really nice guy this morning uh, from Scotland in a Dodge Charger, no, Challenger, need to get that right, Hellcat, really nice bloke. And uh, yeah, but uh, we're here, we're just waiting to go in line, we've got the, the ticket. So um, as soon as we get in there, folks, um, should be a good one.
You're a wizard, Harry. If Harry Potter could modify his angler. Looks cool. Right, we've parked up. Now, this isn't the Peugeot. We're over there. But the first thing we spotted was this lovely Peugeot. Now, it looks like a GTI. It's actually a D-Turbo. And whoever owns this, absolutely fantastic. Just absolute wonderful machine. With all the patina you could ever want. And someone's car horn's absolutely giving it some blap. So, <laughs> but yeah, whoever owns this, thumbs up. Crap car approved. Right, let's start uh, kicking it off. There's this lovely MGZT. That's absolutely gorgeous. I really like that. Aftermarket set of alloys. Very nice. You're going to hear the words very nice a lot today, folks. Lovely Mark IV Golf V6. Oh, check out this peach of a mobile. Mercedes 190. Oh, that's really nice. Check that out. And Grandad spec colour. Oh, a Jag. Lovely Jag. That's really nice. Now, this one is one of the original Top Gear Star and a reasonably priced car. Automatic. Really nice. It's got the full roll cage in it, everything like that. Next to the wonderful little Peugeot. And look, we got a friend. So, lovely couple that I spoke to. A uh, woman's owned this. It was a daily driver. She bought it in 99 and uh, was a daily driver uh, and now they kind of just use it for you know days out and sunny days like today going to shows absolutely beautiful it's an 87 uh, and it's stunning there's not many cars that i like in silver but the 205 looks fantastic in silver so yeah really nice kind of makes the mine look not so good and you got a lovely little mg TF or F? Yeah, it's a MGF because so it's got the round headlights. That's definitely a crap car hunter car. Now this beast, now spoke to the owner of this because he's staying at the same hotel as us. He's come all the way from Scotland. Absolutely nice bloke. He's drove from Scotland. Uh, he went to uh, James May's um, pub, which is about 40 plus miles away from here, not too far. Had a meal there. He's at this event and then he's off to uh, Clarkson's Farm tomorrow. So big shout out to this dude and the fact that he's doing it in a great big muscle car. It's just beautiful. It sounded amazing. And you got uh, its rival, the Mustang. Lovely colour. Oh, another Jag. You'll see quite a lot of Jags here, folks. Uh, ranging from this to all, all seat. Look, another Jag there. Sandwiched between the two wonderful Jags, you've got this beautiful little Mini. Fantastic. And then you've got quite a few modern day cars as well. So your Fiestas, your BMW M1s. Blech. Sorry, I've just uh, convulsively been sick. There's Mike Fern running like a madman. Here's a lovely little Mini as well. Now this Golf Caddy, try and get me shadow out the shot but this golf caddy is absolutely stunning credit to the owner really nice got a 16 valve engine she's a 16 valve leads she can pull the skin off the race pudding with some nice big throttle bodies on it yeah really clean some nice porsche 928 wheels see look at the interior of this look at this bed that is just mm. Very nice. Is this a Subaru BRZ? Very nice. Seat proof BRZ. Really nice. Lovely, lovely little vehicle. Yeah, there you go. Just to prove it is a BRZ. I really like that. Obviously, a lot rarer to the Toyota A. Was it the GT86? Another big jag. These have uh, come quite popular, and I think ever since Mike Fern did his on uh, on the Drive Tribe channel, they've become quite popular. And they have this beautiful Opal GT. Look at that. That is just peachy. 
next to a really nice Mazda MX-5 doing the old winky face. And then some more modern burp gear. We got a four-door Honda, a little Suzuki next to it. Another little Mazda MX-5, early one, Mark 5 Golf GTI. How about these two? Lovely Volkswagen Calm gear. Really nice. Got some nice patina on it. And uh, yeah, stunning colour. Really nice looking, uh, really nice looking motor. And you got this uh, absolute waft machine. Nice big old Merc. Come around to the back. Oh, she's a 500 SL. Really nice. Really like that. Yeah, that's that's rather tidy. That is, uh, and just sat behind it. Um, ignore that for a second because everyone loves them. And to be fair, I do like them, but I much prefer this Jaguar E-Type. Look at them little LEDs. So it's a Series One, and this is oh, this is just drop dead gorgeous. Now. You can see the paint on it. You see that it's not metal flake. That's just the the paint weathered. But this thing is just oh beautiful. You daily drive the crap out of that, and uh, yeah, I really like that. What would you choose, folk? Would you choose Mark IV Supra or a Jaguar E Type Series One? Yeah, they're obviously worth a lot more money and they've gone up in popularity, but I've always liked a Jag, so Jag would be for me. Look at that. All the patina. Yes, very nice. Dream car. We've got a Nissan Skyline. 30. Iron face. This was at uh, Retro Rides this year. Really nice. There we go. He was on the Johnny Smith stage. Again, really nice. Nice little, really nice modified 106. Uh, she's got the 16 Viv plopped in her. Really nice. Absolute little weapon this is. Very nice. It just, it just looks awful. It just, it just looks good. I bet that's an absolute hoot to drive. No B road is safe with this thing. Credit to the owner. Really like that. Another Jag. Some Audis. RS4. Oh look, RS4. So, <coughs> pardon me. Size of RS4. So I'm not sure what generation this is. And then you got this one, which is an RS4, but it's just massive. What happened to small cars, eh? You got a Jag Estate, a rather clean Mark V, really nice. Uh, a seat or seat. So, oh, we can just hear old Richard Hammonds coming over the microphone. So, now this Mini is really nice because look, it's got an absolute unit. It's got a six, no, the 16 valve, 16 valve Honda. That is nice. That is really nice. Two legit racing drivers in this lineup as well. I so tell you what, this yeah. and that little 106 would be an absolute hoot on the B roads. Another RS4, very nice. And then you got everyday things like this little Fiesta and uh, Mark 7 or 8 Golf, I don't know, and I don't really care. A Kia. An absolute barge or a drug dealer machine that is a BMW. An Audi Titty. It's a newer shape. 
nice uh, nice little fiesta really original ztec s as well looks nice original nice little another jag gorgeous colored aston martin again not really up to my supercars i can just see that the front tires are 255 so that just makes me wince probably the cost of all four tires on this car and they look like michelins would i'd be able to buy a couple of project cars nice porsche this kind of style porsche is nice i like that oh the scooby crew are going now they're all blapping out you got a uh, bmw z3 clown is it uh, the clown shoe or whatever they call it nice bmw e30 really nice alpine white three door uh, that's a mini <laughs> i know it's not a mini it says bmw but nice volvo oh really nice porsche now a scooby that hasn't left yet and then you've got this one can't remember if it's a blob eye or a bug eye can't remember the, which one they are but i like this style and then you've got another jag next to that you've got an aston martin Again, not too clued up on the Aston Martins. Is it DB9? Yeah, I want to say DB9. And this absolutely gorgeous, bright, in-your-face Honda S2000. That just screams. That just absolutely screams, yes. Now, a car that's, that I bet not many people are going to take pictures of, but I like this because it fits into the crap car kind of style. Now, this probably look at it and go Dave what the fuck is that well this is it's left hand drive it's three door you'll never guess what it's a Ford Escort yes American market Ford Escort W Reg so 2000 I really like the styling of this not sure about three spokes but again that was kind of indicative of the era so i like that a very bright green ford fiesta i'm guessing owned by a lady um really cool yeah it's all right that is and then a normal fiesta but it's got a pop and bang map on it Blup. another honda s2000 really nice rs4 that looks very menacing that is absolutely oh i like that now oh ford ganada get in the ganada you slag so she's a v6 three liter with banded steelies on her that oh and she's an automatic as well that i really like just got it's just got presence to it it's got real nice presence it's no show queen i'm guessing this is actually used it's had the interior all redone but this just looks awesome i really like this that's a lovely color very nice there's some bmw you got this really nice triumph herald again really digging this looks like it's actually used and driven the fact that uh, she's not a show pony or anything like that and it's just absolutely you know you've got the different colored boot lid and then you've got the wheels bolted onto the back there you go i think that's awesome yeah 1360 oh and a little cherry bomb exhaust as well that is an awesome little motor Yes, I really like that. That's nice. You can see where the arm is just rubbed through on the paint, which is just brilliant. And then you've got the strap on the bonnet as well, which is just awesome. Now, folks, how about this? How about this? This absolute awesome little, no worries. Absolutely awesome. So if you can't quite stretch to a DeLorean, because they're getting what, 30, 40, 50 grand, get yourself a smart car. Bolt on some bits, 
winner because I tell you what, this has had more attention than pretty much all the Mustangs and Ferraris and anything that you can get here. And it is true because it is just absolute eye opener. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. Even got the Delorean doors as well. It's just, oh, mint. Love it. And it lights up as well. Oh, that's fantastic. I bet this looks awesome going down the road. Yeah, I can guarantee it has more looks than anything here whatsoever. <laughs> so if we have a quick look at the interior, the doors up. Look at that. You haven't got the old levers and anything. I just think this is absolutely brilliant. You'll never hit 88 times 6 engaged at 44. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. And it's even got a flux capacitor made out of pens. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. That should win an award. I love that. Brilliant. And then you've got the, the front of it as well. Oh, I can just guarantee this gets more looks than anything, like I said. Oh, that's put a smile on my face. It's parked next to this Jag. I'm not interested in that. Oh, look at this. Love the colour of this. Now, I'm a sucker for a really nice green car. Green paintwork. And again, these are starting to get a bit thin on the ground. Toyota GT. Really nice. Now you've got this big old wagon. Absolutely awesome. That's really nice. Now, if you look around, folks, there's not many people around here. That's because... They're all up on the hill here, watching the karting. So you've got Ben Collins and Jimmy Broadbent and a load of other folks, and they're doing 20 laps at the moment, I think, or something like that. So I thought I'd take the time to be able to film down here without getting interrupted or dodging out of uh, people. So. Now, these are starting to get a bit, uh, you don't see them. You didn't see them very often anyway, when they were new. So yeah, I think they're a fantastic little car. Mark III Golf, really nice. In the black, five door, yes. Ah, oh, so it hasn't got a standard engine. That's uh, a 1.8 20 valve turbo engine, by the look of it. Yeah, and it's like it's uh, meant to be. I bet that uh, goes nice. Next to a really nice, clean, and I say clean, Mark II Golf. Unfortunately, I, when this came in, it was smoking slightly, but hey, it's just, you know, it's just saying, announcing that it's here. But credit to her. And a 16 valve engine. Really nice. And you've got a Nissan pickup truck as well. Really like that. I'm pretty sure that's the style of truck that, uh, oh, when Clarkson did his boy toy uh, boater, um, but he used the second one version, he used one of these. Oh, Mazda, Mazda MX-3, I want to say MX-3, nice looking car, oh, yeah, the MX-3, the really nice, that, that is really nice, I like that, another Scooby, looks tidy that is, oh, it's on, on a wide plate, so, be slightly cheaper tax than if it was a 51 plate. Another bright green Ford Fiesta with uh, with very bright orange wheels. Almost kind of Scooby-Doo vibes off that one. Kind of like that. The Blobby. I call this the, the Mr. Blobby version of the MX-5. Because it just, yeah. Apparently a really nice car to drive. I'm just not keen on the styling. Bread van. Polo, eight valve by the sound of it, or look of it. Really nice MR2. Lovely colour as well. Ah, that's really nice. Uh, uh, say it with me, folks. A Nissan cash cow. If anyone knows, I absolutely hate Nissan cash cows, Nissan dukes, or puke, as I like to call it. And then what other vehicles? Oh, yeah, the Renault catcher or as i like to call it cat shit anyway subaru legacy state in pearlescent white very nice then we've got these again so this mark this, that is nice though mark four but oh oh 
oh, lottery win, please, come round to me. And I'd daily drive that. Mm. And then another wagon that you don't see very often, really, nowadays, is one of these, Mercedes uh, W10 E-Class, an estate version. All right, let's go down to the side. This very, very green and clean Mark One with, uh, oh, it's got a modern TSI turbo engine in it. And all the engine bay has been shaved and tucked and everything else. And even the door handles, no door handles as well. They've all been shaved. Absolutely gorgeous. Lovely interior as well. Like that. That is just, that's really nice. Oh, and she's a small, small tail as well. Yes. It's green, so I'm going to like it anyway. Let me go to this wonderful looking Mark II. Another Mark II, three door, 16 valve. That looks very factory fresh. Really liking the, uh, the is it the uh, BBS, the uh, RZ wheels, but they've got like a nice lip on them. That is, that is stunning. That is really nice. And then you've got a Jag and then a Jag. So you've got the two Jags together. Obviously, the, the later one, the much earlier one, 03, that's really nice. Like that. Now, I really like this. This is a uh, lovely little Austin or Rover Metro. Nice little five door, 1.1S. Yes, I like that. That's really tidy. And the thing is, people always go for the three doors because, you know, they look better, but uh, no, really credit to the owner. It's really nice looking H plate. So what, 91, 1991. So yeah, that's really nice. Nice little porker. Oh look, it's a bathtub. Fit a bath with a big, oh, it's got an intercooler. So I bet it's not standard. Fezzer. And then, uh, oh, it's a uh, Twingo, but it's this, the Gordini edition. Hmm, nice. Mark 1 TT, another Jag, that's rather nice, with learner plates, I tell you what, if you're learned to drive in that, then respect. Now uh, you've got this uh, Ford Focus, it's um, an ST170, really nice, these are actually going a bit thin on the ground, I know the, the estates were a bit thin anyway, but yeah, I like these estates, I've li I like the... Uh, the Mark One, anyway, it's always a good looking car, and I don't think it's aged that much either, you know, apart from with it being a Ford, it's uh, reducing itself, so it's get it'll get faster. And that's the thing with people saying about Fords, they get faster as they get older, and that's because they uh, they rust. So, yeah, go down here, you got this lovely, gorgeous beetle. Oh, this is stunning. You can just see under the here. Really nice. Gorgeous interior. That is just peachy, as they say. Really nice. Credit to the owner. Just seeing how lovely this thing is. Really nice. And I really like the colour as well. Yeah, fair play to him. That is uh, immaculate. Yes, nice. Ford Focus, yeah, but it's not any Ford Focus, folks. Now, from this angle, you can't really tell, but them back wheels there look a bit, a bit fatter than usual. And then you see the engine, you realize, wait a minute. That's not, tran uh, that's not uh, transversal, it's longitude. And then you see, the V8 4 cam 32. Yep, it's a one UZ FE engine stuffed into a Mark 1. Really nice, like that. Really clean Mark 4 Escort van. Looked at and it's uh, RS, obviously, they never did an RS van. 
um, but it's got the RS turbo engine in it, EFI. That is really nice. That is clean. That is stunning. Like I say, I'm not, uh, I've had a couple of Fords and they've always disappointed me, but uh, for the owners that do, oh yes, what sound for days. But for the, the owners that do stick with Fords and, and love them, fair play to them, get them up to this standard. It's absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Looks good. Yes, like that. And then an ST. And then a lovely RS Mark I. That is gorgeous. Oh, Colin McRae vibes. And you've got this really nice MX-5. Next to that, you've got a really nice beach buggy in bright orange. Ah, oh, Trabby. Ah, oh, Trabby with white walls. Oh, I can, I can just hear the deafening VTEC right now. Another Jag. That's really nice. Good old Landy, 110. Explosive ordnance. Got this now. This is gorgeous. Love the colour. I've always liked this this colour of RS4. A very clean BMW. Red estate and has it got a V8 in it? Yes, it's got a V8 stuck in it. And what's he just say on the windscreen? Please don't judge me for my small inspect. I just finished being built. Fantastic. I tell you what, fair play. Nice big V8 and it's an estate. Really like that. Mazda 323 on the Civic Type R. Yeah, I can hear the rice being burnt. Uh, a Mazda MX-5 in a uh, theatre bath frock. Oh, look. So you've got two Alphas here. 18 plate. And what's that? 96. And I really like this. This probably appeals to me more than that because the paintwork, essentially. And it's old and it's boxy. You know, look at that. Oh, I, this just fit. Whoever owns this is just, yes. And they're on uh, Weird Car Twitter, which I suppose you can rename to Weird Card X. Yes. Always like this design of like this window. Kind of, kind of gives you the idea it might be in a five door, but no. But uh, yes, an alpha with lack appeal. And I, black appeal and rust, and uh, I really like that. Nice. That'll probably, if that gets old enough than that, then it, that's what it'll look like. Another nice clean alpha there. You've got, uh, oh, you got a Galaxy. But, uh, oh, is it a five pot? Well, it's got Puma Speed on it, and yeah, it's probably a five pot, so... If you want to haul the family. Now, this is a big car, folks. You know, big family car. And then... Yeah. How about this? Dodge Ram 25 Hyundai. Heavy duty. And uh, she is heavy duty. Look at the size of them springs. The bonnet, I'm, what, 5 foot 10 on a good day. Uh, and the wing mirror comes up... I'm actually holding this camera right now uh, at my face height. So that gives you an idea of, of how tall this thing is. So you can just see the top of my head there. So yeah, really nice. That's a big old beast. God, imagine getting hit by that. Jeez. I'll put it this way. That would run over that. Another little triumph. Really nice. And then uh, you got a couple of... MX-5s, Mark 1, Mark 2, another Mark 1. Oh, sound of that jag. Whoa. Very nice. And then you've got this, a really nice G-Wagon. But it hasn't got like the stupid wheels and it's still kind of got big fat bulbous tyres on it. This is uh, definitely an older version, I think. G500. Oh. Oh, the, oh. Again, I have a soft spot for G-Wagons. I'd even quite happily have a diesel G-Wagon. 
um, Mercedes, if you happen to be listening and fancy, <laughs> if you ever fancy giving me a diesel G wagon uh, in uh, Forest Green, that would be great. I'd love that. But uh, that ain't going to happen. But you never know. If you don't ask, you don't get. But yeah, really like that. Now, coming over to here, got this absolute gorgeous R33 GTS T. There's their YouTube handle. I really like this. This is, uh, well, again, I like purple cars. Green and purple cars are always going to go down well with me. Uh, especially after now I've got purple slurple. Which, in actual fact, so purple slurple is the exact same model and make of vehicle that Richard Hammond test drove whilst he was working for Men in Motors back in the day. You can actually find the YouTube video uh, if you type in uh, Suzuki Wagon uh, R and Men and Motors, uh, you'll see him putting about in one. I don't think he enjoyed it, but, uh, you know, maybe next year I'll bring that and uh, see where it goes from. So, yeah, anyway, nice little uh, polo saloon, quite rare. A Mustang, big old Mustang. It's a supercharged one. Very nice. Oh, look, an MG ZR. Oh, yes. So there's only actually two MGs here. There was a ZT at the start, and then this one. Tell you what, let's go over to it. So I've got a soft spot for MG ZRs. Uh, I've uh, had, I've had three. I, you know, currently got the green one, which is my third MG ZR. Now my first MG ZR I owned was an O2 plate, uh, registration PJ O2 XZB. If you happen to know or happen to own it and fancy selling it, let me know. But it was in trophy blue. Pretty much the same spec as this. No sunroof, but mine had the 17 inch wheels and front fog lights. Um, but I've got a soft spot for these in trophy blue. I think they just look awesome. Yeah. And uh, a Matiz with a slightly questionable number, uh, not number plate, but uh, uh, tail light. But yeah. Oh, I really like that. Now, here we go. Another bit of a rarity, ladies and gentlemen. So this is, might think, oh, this is a Mitsubishi Colt. No. This one, I do believe, is a Proton. There you go. Proton Compact 1.6 SRI. Really nice. Like that. There we go, so it's a 10 year anniversary, limited edition. Very nice. Another MX-5, another lovely little mini, and gorgeous color. That's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. And then you've got your big Jag again, and another mini. I do need to get a mini. It is on the cards at some point, so yeah. And there we go, another MX-5 Mark II. There is a couple of Scoobies left. So this whole row down here was pretty much all Subroom Pretzers, apart from that red thing, which is a Citroen C4. But yeah, Hawkeye Subroom Pretzer, very nice. A very bright green Subroom Pretzer, early one as well, M-Reg 94. Now all down here, with Subroom Pretzers, but they've all gone possibly to go and vape or um, to get home before the head gaskets pop. Nice, very clean looking Subaru. And then here you have a Richard Burns 5. Now these are a special car, really nice. These are stunning. So this one this one's number 26, I do believe, or 126. That is really nice. I like that. Very nice. Then you have this absolute gangster mobile of a Rolls Royce. And I saw the bloke get out of this and he looked rather mean and menacing, so I wouldn't want to... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He, he, I wouldn't want to meet him down a dark alley. Oh, yes. Definitely. He fitted the car. 
there we go. Lovely old Rolls Royce. Oh. oh no, definitely not. Really nice. And you got this Honda Civic, another brat 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 machine with all the RPMs. Lovely little mini. You're a wizard, Harry. Not quite. But this used to be blue. And it's uh yeah, kind of like that. Really kind of smart. And a 370. A Fiat bathtub, which is, uh, yeah, Fiat bath. A Ferrari. 360. A really nice Audi. Really like the colour. Not sure of the model, but uh, yeah, I really like that. That's nice. RS5. Oh, I guess it's an RS5 then. Yeah, really like that. But I equally like this more. Really nice Series 1 Land Rover. That's absolutely stunning with the old bikini top. Nice basic interior, some knobbly tyres. That's all you need, really. Yes. Like that, very nice. Now, the uh, bloke that I was speaking to earlier, that's um, his partner owns the Peugeot 205 Cabriolet next to us, he happened to mention that if you happen to win the lottery, you know, he's a bit like me, wouldn't buy like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or anything like that. His dream car would be this. And you know what? I agree. Better than a Lotus and kind of more under the radar. So yes, very nice. Then we have uh, Matt's Lamborghini in um, mushy pea green. And then I haven't a clue what that is, folks. No idea. Then you've got this. Again, beautiful Audi Quattro Coupe. Stunning in alpine white or whatever colour. Oh, look, everyone loves a white chaser. Adam C with his uh, chaser. Looking rather nice and very shiny and clean. Back to that uh, MG. You've got, oh, how can we miss this out here? You've got this lovely Sunbeam Tiger. Sorry, not Tiger. Tiger is the V8. The Alpine was the four banger. So this is an Alpine. Really nice believe that in the first James Bond, Dr. No, uh, with Sean Connery, uh, in the uh, race, like chase sequence where he's being chased by a black hearse, he drives one of these. Bit of useless information for you there. Another Jag, which is rather nice, next to a Mercedes, big old Merc. And then you just got modern stuff. Then you got this uh, T, T4 next to a Mini. Uh, and then you've got this. I'm not clean on McLarens, um, but I like this because guess what? It's green. So yeah, that's rather nice. Tidy bar. Now this is a colour over here. Ignore that. No. This Toyota GT86. And it's, it's a really gorgeous colour. It's like a coral. And it just suits it really well. It just seems to just look really nice. I love it. And uh, something's just started over there and it does not sound healthy. It doesn't sound like it's firing on all cylinders. And I don't know what it is. But anyway. So yeah, that's really nice. And then to kind of finish it off for the car park section, you've got this little Toyota logo, which again is a car that you just don't see anymore. Uh, and there's some cars over there. Should we walk down there? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's have a walk down to the car park. Oh, yeah, let's, let's have a look. See what's over there and have a quick mooch. Right, so we're now down in the uh, the overfill car park. So I saw a 
These were in a brace, these were, see there's that little Peugeot diesel that was parked opposite us. Uh, these all kind of went out and they come back in, probably went from Mackey's or something like that, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, they've all come back, nice little polo there as well. Really nice colour actually. Track spec. Yeah. Subaru Legacy. Let's go down here. You've got this uh, really nice 7 Series. I really like that. Again, it's dark green. And it's as... And it's a long boy. Definitely a long boy, but uh, yes, like that very much. It's uh, definitely a car on the list to get. So keep going down here. So the car park's usually got full of modern stuff. Mark IV Golf. Ooh, S Reg. Oh, fairly early one. Ugh. Dog shit. A uh, Golf R. Rover 600. Oh. Mint, and each equally minty next to it is this SN95 Mustang. I really like these, but I prefer the the new edge ones. But I do like these. I wouldn't say no to one if one came up for a decent price. And to be fair, they're a bit unloved, so they do come up fairly cheap sometimes for a V8. But uh, no, I like this one. Is it manual, automatic, automatic? So, see what else is a boot. Like I say, there isn't much really. There's this lovely golf here. On some really nice wheels. Yes, really like that. That is a tidy bar. Very nice. Nice Subaru Impreza over there. Another rice burner. Now this Landy over here, folks, I'm not sure if the paperwork's still in the window. I'm not sure, no. So there was some information in the windscreen about this. So a lad of 21 years old, uh, he, he wants to get into restoring and, and doing this as a as his profession. And it was saying that he has basically rebuilt this. He's even resprayed it. He's done a, basically all the work on this. And 20 year year old lad, credit to him. He's done an absolutely amazing job. It looks like it's just rolled out the factory. It is absolutely stunning. So if he happens to, if you're the person that happens to be the 20 year old lad that restored this, fair pay to you. You've done an amazing job and uh, I think you, you well deserve uh, a job at uh, the smallest cog, really, because, uh, you know, just look how clean it is. Look at that. I don't think there's been any corners cut on here. He's really... For 20 year old, old lad is producing quality of work like that, Hammond give him a job straight away. All right, not much more. We'll go over to here to a car that's kind of piqued me interest. And it is this Vauxhall Amiga. Look at those Strobe, Strobe boys down there. <laughs> yes. Wonder if it was an ex cop car. But I tell you what, that is absolutely gorgeous. Really like that. Stunning. And the fact that uh, it doesn't look like the arches are rotted out or anything is just mint. And that's about it, really, folks. Yeah, people are starting to leave now. They're starting to go on their merry way. There's the crew from earlier. So yeah, happy days. Right, here we are in the show and shine area. 
So first off, we've got Rich and Hammond's great big Chevrolet boat thing that's attracted all the flies. <laughs> if I get out of the way of the thing, you can still see the dents from the arrows. But this thing is absolutely massive. It's like the size of a ship. Next, you've got Drive Chibes Jag, which is really nice on the 20-inch Detroit wheels. Absolutely stunning vehicle, really like this. That is a rather tidy bar. And then you've got uh, Richard's XJR, which again is really nice. Bit of a dream car for me as well. Now Richard Hammond's owned this twice now. He had it, sold it, and then bought it back again. So that's really nice. You got the Ford Mondeo S2000, really nice. Imperial blue. This is Mike Fern's car. Again, really nice vehicle. Something that you just don't see anymore. And another one of Mike Fern's vehicles. Now, I really like this. This is a uh, Rover 620 Ti called Reggie. And I believe he's had it resprayed for the show. And it's absolutely gorgeous colour. Just see the absolutely gorgeousness of it. Big balloon tyres. You can imagine this thing is just a waft machine down the road, especially for a Rover. But then you've got 200 odd horsepower to be able to scooch down the road. So, yeah, really like that. And it's rather tidy. So then we'll go over to some other cars over here. Got this really gorgeous Lotus, which is absolutely stunning color. Really nice. Absolutely uh, peachy, as they would say. Now, I don't really know about much about my Lotuses, but I know I like it because it's purple, so. And then next to that, you've got Phil. So this is uh, Auto Alex's MX-5 that he's had for, I believe, quite a while. And he's had it to all, all sorts of works done to it. Absolutely awesome. Really nice. Some seats probably worth more than the cars that I own. But the main important thing, it's got this great big absolute unit of a Jaguar. That's a Jaguar V6 engine. Really nice. Sounds really nice as well when he was driving it past, parking it up. Really nice. Gorgeous little Toyota Yaris GR. And this gorgeous, like, kind of pearlescent white. It's rather nice. Uh, another YouTuber, uh, Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Broadbent. This is his Supra. Now I like this, but probably more than that uh, black one, because uh, it's got paint fade, it's got dinks, it's got damage, uh, it's got lack of peel, the headlights are faded, and uh, that's that's fine with me. I really like that. It's really cool. It's nice that uh, that it's not uh, a trailer queen. It's actually used and abused. Look at the size of that plenum. Fucking hell. And the size of that turbo as well. Uh huh massive and then another vehicle you don't see very often this is really really tidy so and there's his youtube handle now you've got this gorgeous aston martin with the front that actually flips up and it was open earlier but it isn't anymore and uh, really nice Absolute waft machine, gorgeous paintwork, and I mean gorgeous. It's it's stunning. My uh, my shadow really isn't doing it much credit. Absolute beauty. That is really nice. And then a uh, Mazda MX-5, standard wheels, big body kit. Really uh, nice little motor. And it's got a slush box in it, so 
everyone can drive it. And you got this lovely Rover 420. Well, I'm not sure if it's 420, but it's the uh, estate version. Now, again, this was at Retro Rides Gathering. Really nice. Yes, I like that. That is, that is nice. And then you happen to have this really nice Vauxhall Fiera, which just kind of gives me a, a very kind of American style vibes. Now, apparently I was chatting to a guy earlier, said these were available in South Africa and America, but under a different name. But I just love this, the fact that you've got, you know, you've got that stripe and the swollen arches. Kind of, you know, like I say, it's like the English version of our muscle cars. I'm just afraid that, unfortunately, a lot of these didn't survive because they just rusted away. Um, uh, because hashtag British weather. It's just shocking. But this one is absolutely stunning. Uh, it's really nice. Yeah. That is beautiful. Really like that. Really like that. And I hope uh, a few uh, of the audience members would probably, you know, most likely that you had one or uh, your, your father or your parents had one or can remember someone in the family having one of these. And uh, yeah, I kind of really like that. And then next to it is a really nice Mitsubishi Evo, Tommy Mackin edition. She's been fully stickered up. Really nice. Got the front canards and everything. And... Oh, yes. That is rather nice. I like that. She's a beaut. And you got the go-kart racing over in the background there. Let's just pop over this way. Let's see what the stuff they got. Really clean S2 Escort Turbo. Really like that one. That is absolutely tidy. Probably in the best colour as well of one of these. <laughs> Does anyone remember them stickers? I certainly do. I'm at that age now. But again, these are, uh, I remember when you could pick these up for like two grand for a decent one now. 15, 20 grand. How times have changed. This really nice Golf as well with the Jetta front or the uh, American style front. That is rather nice. I like that. That is rather tidy. Next to it, lovely little nugget of a Polo. And again, I really like this because it's green as well. But look at that. Look at the size of the meat on that. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I really like that. Kind of getting an old school vibe from that. Yes. And then a E36 Bimmer on some chromies. Oh, this is a throwback. Really nice. Yes. Oh, all the shine. And you've got this lovely Porsche Spider. Very nice. Speedster. Really like that. And then you got a BMW, I meant a uh, Toyota. Huh? You got a Toyota Supra. And a really fantastic colour. This is what I like about these cars nowadays, folks, is that colours are starting to come back. You know, instead of having your boring greys and silvers and whites and, you know, snooze fest of colours, you know, actually, manufacturers have, have pulled the thumb out of their ass, really, and, and kind of coming out with really nice, bright, vibrant colours. So, you know, the fact that this is a factory option, fair play to Toyota, nice one. Right, not forgetting another Drive Tribe car that's been on there is Martin. 
So this is a sub impressor that, uh, ah, here's a bit of bump about it, that uh, Richard Hammond happened to use. Uh, it's been fully painted, reworked, it's got the kink out the bonnet, and it's making quite a bit of power now. Really nice. And I like the fact it's still got the tow bar on the back, I like that. So yeah, there we go, that's Martin. And that kind of pretty much concludes, folks, all the vehicles around here. Ah, wait a minute. There's, there's one more. And it's just over here. So if anyone knows about uh, these Grenadier Land Rovers, well, no, it's not a Land Rover, you can't really call it that. But you've got these Grenadiers. Well, the main man happened to buy this, which is Dewey. Now, Dewey is the first production Land Rover sold, and it was sold to King George VI, then it was sold to uh, a doctor, and then it was left languishing on a farm for many years, and essentially it was rotten, it was knackered, the chassis was broken in half, it was just an absolute pile of bits, but they wanted to keep the vehicle as original as possible, so, you know, there was a company that had the task of rebuilding this, but not putting a new chassis in and everything like that. And then after doing that, it went through the travels and it's an absolutely fantastic. It, uh, it really did. Uh, and it's credit to their work because this thing was an absolute pile. So here's some of the information. If you want to pause it and have a read. But yeah, absolute credit to their work. It's a fantastic looking vehicle. I love the fact that they haven't tried to straighten anything out. There we are, there's the interior. Absolutely beautiful. Nice and original. So yeah, there we go. Absolute credit to them for getting this back on the road. It really was. And like I say, they could have chucked a new chassis in, but they didn't. Uh, they managed to rework it and get it how it is, so tidy bar <laughs> right folks uh that's the end of drive tribe at uh, the haynes motor museum it's been an absolutely fantastic day at the moment they've uh, just handed out the trophies for the carting uh very tired absolutely fantastic day very busy uh, great quality of cars so we're going to uh, fire up the peugeot and uh, go back to a hotel where we're going to need much needed sleep because I'm shattered. If you ever get a chance to come to this show next year, I hope they do it again. Um, it's well worth it. It's fantastic. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a good show for next year. So till next time, folks, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, like always, have a good one and die bar. bye